This conversation is taking place at the Grand Opera House. One other priority that you've uh, enunciated was uh, protecting the environment. Uh, you know, th this is something you, you, you ran on. Um, do, do you think that, uh, that Delaware's in, uh, environmental regulations are sufficient to take care of the job now? And if not, what would you uh, like to change? Well, we have, we have strong laws that you've covered over the course of 20 years, 25 years. We have, we have more. more than that. <laughs> and, 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 and so you know, we have fairly strong environmental, both statutes, protection statutes, as well as regulations. What we have not had, and now we do have, because of a bill that was sponsored by Dave McBride and signed into law by Jack and that our office wrote, we now have the ability to prosecute and enforce those laws. Our ability to enforce chronic uh, violations against chronic polluters was, was, was diminished, was, was uh, not that strong. Now we have a new law that allows us to go after those that, that chronically pollute our environment. Before this law was passed, these, some of the chronic polluters would basically just write a check. Uh, polluting the environment was a cost of doing business. And, and, and writing a check to comply with a regulatory uh, penalty or some civil penalty was just a function of, uh, you know, built into their, into their budget. Now we have real penalties and real penalty structures that allow us to actually extract some, hopefully, responsibility from the organization that, we, that, that is doing this and get them to stop and get them not to make it kind of a cost of doing business. So, so we, did, we did have a deficiency in terms of our enforcement capacity. Now we have that based on the new law that was passed. There's been a talk over the years uh, about it's time to take another look at the coastal zone. Uh, do you think that's right, uh, that take another look? It's been, oh gosh, what, 40 years. Uh, is it time to, to look at it and see what needs changing? I think that's an area where I don't think we need much change. I think what Russell Peterson started and, and, and actually Ruth Ann Minner and others uh, further codified kind of gets it right. You saw my office and me aggressively intervene in this most, most recent go-round with the Army Corps of Engineers in terms of the dredging issue. Um, I, I went out far out, out there and said that the Army Corps of Engineers had to comply with Delaware permitting processes. A uh, federal district judge here who I highly respect had a different view of that than I did. Um, so I, I was the guardian of the Coastal Zone Act. Um, uh, other, other, a court had a different view of that. Um, but no, I think with the law on that front is, uh, has it right. Um, can you imagine what, what our coastline would look like without it? And we have a beautiful- Frankly, no. <laughs> yeah, it, it, would, it, would, it, it would, wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. From my perspective. I think for the citizens of the state, I think they share that view, but that happens to be mine. You also are a member of the, the, the National Guard. Uh, what, what, uh, what motivated you to, to join that uh, People your father's age and my age, we did it to, sure. to beat the draft. Sure. But, you know, you were under no compunction to that. You, you volunteered to, to be in the National Guard. Why'd you do that? I went to Annapolis with my dad when I was about 10 years old and thought from that moment on I wanted to go and try to be a midshipman and go to the, apply to the Naval Academy. Fast forward about 10 years later, I ended up not applying there. I applied to a different school, got in and went there. When I went to school, where I went to college, Penn, um, I almost joined the Navy ROTC, but I went as far as getting that paperwork. So throughout my life, I've kind of flirted with it. It was an itch I never scratched. Fast forward to when I was about 31 years old, I ran into a colleague of mine who was a full bird colonel in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia who said, if you're so impressed by the military, you can still join. And that's the finally the time I took the paperwork and signed up. And a year and a half later, I took my commission as an officer, and I ended up celebrating my 40th birthday in Baghdad. It's, I'm not sure if I'd recommend that as the, as the way to do it. It's better to be in the military when you're younger. Um, but I, I'm incredibly proud to be Attorney General of the State of Delaware. But the thing I'm most proud of, the organization I'm most proud to be affiliated with, is the you know, Army National Guard. Um, it's been incredibly rewarding. I've met, I've met such fine, fine individuals, from the leader of our organization, Frank Vavla, uh, General Vavla, to um, the folks I went overseas with, and was honored to serve with. Um, remarkable, remarkable 
young men and women, remarkable young citizen soldiers. Citizen, the, just think of that phrase, citizen soldiers. These are true citizens and, and soldiers. And at any given time in the last decade, in the two wars this nation has been fighting, essentially over the last decade, half of the ground forces, half of the boots in the ground, have made, been made up of reserve components. These are remarkable individuals who put their lives aside, leave their family, and go and serve. Um, uh, our nation's lucky to have people like this. Thanks, bro. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. You're connected with Content Delaware.